Good morning. Welcome to Christ the King's morning prayer service. This is Monday, December 4th. And this is this is uh, the beginning of Advent. So we're doing a few things differently in Advent. And so uh, we begin, uh, you don't need to turn to this. This is just for the celebrant. The opening sentence for Advent is from Isaiah 40, verse 3. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. We begin on page 11. Dearly beloved, the scriptures teach us to acknowledge our many sins and offenses, not concealing them from our Heavenly Father, but confessing them with humble and obedient hearts, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. We ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before Almighty God, but especially when we come together in his presence to give thanks for the great benefits we have received at his hands, to declare his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things which are necessary for our life and our salvation. Therefore, draw near with me to the throne of heavenly grace. We'll just take a moment. We say together, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have been against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. And for all those that confess their faults. Restore all those who are repentant according to your promises. Declare to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant the most merciful Father for his sake, that we may now live godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ desires not the death of sinners, but that they may turn from their wickedness and live. He has empowered and commanded his ministers to pronounce to his people being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all who truly repent and genuinely believe his holy gospel. For this reason, we beseech him to grant his true repentance and his Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. that our present deeds may please him, the rest of our lives may be pure and holy, and that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. O oh God, make speed to save us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. This was the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Now, this being the season of Advent, we have a special seasonal antiphon on page 29. Uh, the response is, oh, come, let us adore him on page 29. Then we'll uh, move into, because it's Advent, we use a special canticle on page 18. Okay, uh, the Benedictus S. Domine. On page 29, our King and Savior now draws near. Oh, God, let us go and we'll say the Benedictus S. Domine together. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. 
Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. We'll now have the uh, psalm reading and the scripture reading. This morning we have two psalms, Psalm 86 and 87. Psalm 86 begins on page 381. We will read the re psalm responsively by half verse. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and hear me. For I am poor and in misery. Preserve my life, for I am faithful. My God, save your servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful unto me, O Lord. For I call upon you. Comfort the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are good and gracious. And of great mercy to all those who call upon you. Give ear, Lord, unto my prayer. And attend to the voice of my humble supplications. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you. For you answer me when I call. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord. Nor are there any beings like yours. All nations that you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord. And shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. Indeed, you are God alone. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. O oh, in my heart to you, that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will praise your name forevermore. For great is your mercy toward me. You have delivered my life from the nethermost pit. O God, the proud have risen up against me, and the company of my own men have sought after my life, and have not sent you for more powers. But you, O Lord God, are full of compassion and mercy. Long suffering, blessedness and goodness and truth. O oh, turn then unto me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength unto your servant and help the son of your handmaid. Show me some token of your favor that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because you, Lord, have been my helper and comforter. Psalm 87. The Lord loves the foundation which he has laid upon the holy hills. The gates of Zion are dear to him and all of the dwellings of Jacob. Very excellent things are spoken of you. O city of God. I will consider Egypt and Babylon. Behold, Philistia also, and Tyre with Ethiopia. Each one was born in her. And of Zion it shall be reported that each one was born in her. And those eyes shall be the Lord shall record it when he registers the people. That each one was born there. The singers and the dancers also shall say, All my great springs are in you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was one beginning, is now, is now and ever shall be. Lord of God, God. Amen. Amen. We continue reading in Acts, beginning with the 26th chapter, the first verse. So Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and made his defense. I consider myself fortunate that it is before you, King Agrippa. I am going to make my defense today against all the accusations of the Jews especially because you are familiar with all the customs and controversies of the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, spent from the beginning among my own nation and in Jerusalem, is known by all the Jews. They have known for a long time, if they are willing to testify, that according to the strictest party of our religion, I have lived as a Pharisee. 
And now I stand here on trial because of my hope in the promise made by God to our fathers, to which our 12 tribes hope to attain as they earnestly worship night and day. And for this hope, I am accused by Jews, O Cain. Why is it thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead? Mm -hmm. I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things in opposing the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And I did so in Jerusalem. I not only locked up many of the saints in prison mm -hmm. after receiving authority from the chief priests, but when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. And I punished them often in all the synagogues and tried to make them blaspheme. And in raging fury against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. In this connection, I journeyed to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. At midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, that shone around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. And I said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you as a servant and witness to the things in which you have seen me and to do and to those in which I will appear to you, delivering you from your people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, mm -hmm. that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Therefore, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, and throughout all the region of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, performing deeds in keeping with their repentance. For this reason, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. To this day, I have had the help that comes from God, and so I stand here testifying both to small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would come to pass, that the Christ must suffer, and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. And as he was saying these things in his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are out of your mind. Your great learning is driving you out of your mind. But Paul said, I am not out of my mind, most excellent Festus, mm -hmm. but I am speaking true and rational words. For the king knows about these things, and to him I speak boldly. For I am persuaded that none of these things has escaped his notice. For this has not been done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. And Agrippa said to Paul, in a short time, would you persuade me to be a Christian? And Paul said, whether short or long, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me this day might become such as I am, except for these chains. Then the king rose and the governor and Bernice and those who were sitting with him, and when they had withdrawn, they said to one another, this man is doing nothing to deserve death or imprisonment. And Agrippa said to Festus, this man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. The word of the Lord. The canticle this morning is the Ecce Deus on page 85, surely it is God who saves me. And let's do the canticle this way. I will uh, read the first part uh, to the asterisk, then you can complete the verse on page 85. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense. And my people be my savior. 
Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing. From the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give me thanks to the Lord, all of this day. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that you remember that his name is called. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And it is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We'll now continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 20. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of our life, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And for the salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And let your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And give us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take them out your holy spirit from us. The Collect of the Day. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the dark works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall, shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll now have a time for extemporaneous prayer. And on Mondays, we concentrate on Christ the King. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we praise you and worship you and adore you. And thank you for your many blessings that you have given us. We particularly thank you for the blessings within our church, for the people, for the staff, and for your working within us. Please continue to help our staff, a lot of which has turned over lately, to meld together into an efficient and loving group that is very effective in their ministry to you. Lord God, Heavenly Father, I lift up all the members and attendees and staff and priests at Christ the King. Father, we are here because you want us here. We are together because you believe we can be your servants in a mighty way. And so, Lord, I ask that you pour your mercy, your grace, and your peace upon all of us. As Terry said, there's been many a staff change, and 
that brings stress to everyone. Help us to bring those stresses to you. Help us to love each other with your love because with human love, we can't do it. And so Lord, I, I ask for your mercies to continue among those who are sick. I especially lift up Daisy and Matt and others that you know among us that are suffering and are in need of you in their life. Thank you. Yes, Lord, we do especially lift up Christ the King on Mondays and the staff here. You know, we lift up Father Kyle, Father Pete, Deacon Bill. Uh, going into Advent, we ask you especially to surround them with your grace and uh, a special measure of strength um, as they shepherd us into and through this season. They help us to scrub ourselves clean of anything that is not of you and prepare ourselves for Advent. Prepare ourselves to be used by you to do your work in this world and to help make Christ the King a church that is welcoming um, to everyone who walks through these doors. We ask you, Lord, to prepare us Prepare us for Advent and prepare us for the work you have in mind for us to do. Um, you know what this work is and you know how we need to be prepared to do it. So we ask you, Lord, to do this work in us. And most importantly, help us to welcome all who walk through those doors to have a relationship with you. All these things we ask in your name. Well, this is uh, Advent season, and because of that, we're going to be using the general Thanksgiving on page 25. And this is something that uh, we say together on page 25, general Thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of mercies, we, our worthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praises, not only with our lips, but in our lives. By giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, throughout all ages. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.